Hey, Power Factor fans, I am Rick, and we're going to do a follow-up on the trivia question from episode 276. Uh, I put the question out there, and I got a few replies, but I wasn't really happy. Uh, one, none of them were correct, and I, and I wasn't really happy with the analysis. And one of the reasons was that I won't say that I was being uh, intentionally... Uh, secretive about anything the way the question was worded was somewhat ambiguous and and it was to sort of generate this thinking along the lines of well if it was set up this way then this would be the rule but if it was set up that way then that would be the rule and I didn't show a stage diagram so there were some questions uh, that I didn't answer and so I wanted to just kind of go over how the stage was laid out and then the rules that applied to the situation as it played out during the course of fire. Now, the course of fire was a unlimited scored IDPA stage. There were uh, four targets to be engaged with three rounds each, best three, uh, for a total of 12 rounds. The shooter started uh, seated at a table and there were three non-threat targets four threat targets and all the shots were fired while the shooter was seated. Now back in the day uh, when I used to shoot a lot more often on the weekends, Friday nights and Sunday afternoons, after the match we'd often go out for a, a meal or a few beers or something and of course as we were uh, dissecting our match performance uh, for the day we would recreate the stages on the table at the restaurant uh, by using uh, salt shakers and sugar packets and whatnot to represent the um, targets and stage props and whatnot. So going back to that uh, practice of the, that era, we're going to lay the stage out here and show you how it was set up on the range. So the shooter was seated at a table and there were three non-threats. So the non-threats are represented by equal three non-threats essentially blocking the view of the shooter and then four threat targets. Now one of the things that I had neglected to mention is that the targets were not of equal threat. They were laid out sort of like this. And the placement of the non-threats um, required that the shooter do a little ducking and moving uh, back and forth to avoid hitting the non-threat targets. But they were distinctly uh, arranged in a, a tactical priority so that the targets would have to be engaged near to far. Now T2 and T3 were approximately equal distance. T1 was definitely closer. T4 was definitely the farthest away. So the your options for engagement order would be T1, T2, T3, T4, or T1, T3, T2, T4. Now the reason being, of course, that the rules uh, require that the distance that two targets are from the shooter must be greater than six feet difference for uh, tactical priority to determine the engagement order. So for instance, if the targets were arranged more like this, even though they're different distances from the shooter, the difference is less than six feet between this one and this one, this one and this one. And so even though they are somewhat uh, staggered, uh, they can be treated as the same distance away from the single shooting position because they're just not enough different. So the stage was set up so that they would be distinctly different um, requiring near to far engagement. So the question was, and again, best three per target. So the question was, if the shooter, or this is an example of what the shooter actually did, the shooter engaged T1 with two rounds, moved to T2, engaged that with two rounds, then the light came on, oh geez, it's three rounds per target, which is what happens virtually every time we have a stage where the targets are engaged with some number of rounds other than two. Someone will always shoot two on the first target, oh geez, you know, forget. And in this case, what the shooter did was after firing two rounds at T1, two rounds at T2, they then came back to T1, fired a shot, back to T2, fired a shot, then they went to T3 for three rounds and T4 for three rounds. So the question was, 
Does the shooter deserve any penalties? And if so, what are they for and how many? Now, I got replies to the inquiry, of course, some inquiries were, well, if the targets were of equal threat, then yada, yada, yada. And of course, if they were of equal threat, then there would be no penalty because when the targets are of equal threat, you can essentially engage in any order as long as when you're done, the required number of rounds are on each target. So if the, if the targets had been arrayed, something like this, you could, if you wanted to, go one, 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 two, one, two, two, and it wouldn't matter. You can engage in whatever order you want. But when the targets are set up in an array that requires them to be engaged in a certain order, in this case, tactical priority, then you must complete the minimum number of rounds required on each target before you go to the next target. So to do this perfectly, you would have to shoot T T1 with three rounds, then transition to either T2 or T3, because they're approximately the same threat value, for three rounds, go to the other one for three rounds, and then save T4 for last with three rounds. Now, what the shooter did, uh, tactical priority near to far, um, there's a rule that specifically says if you are engaging near to far and you don't, you get a penalty. So in my, after extensively <laughs> researching this, I decided that that rule really comes into play on the first shot you fire on the stage. So if I were to pick the gun up, I think it was a table start, if I were to pick the gun up off the table, go right to T3, then the rule that covers um, engaging in tactical priority near to far would come into play. And uh, that is rule, oh, where did I write it down? It doesn't come into play, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, the rule that says you must engage near to far, I think, comes into play if you initially engage the wrong target. So again, if I picked the gun up off the table and shot T2, T3, or T4, rather than T1, then that rule would come into play. But it didn't because the shooter drew to T1, fired two shots, then went to T2. Now that was their first mistake. They violated rule 3.2.3.1. And that's the rule that says you must engage near to far. Now, in the context of engage meaning the minimum number of rounds required. One of the issues is that we commonly use the word engage to mean any time you fire a shot at a target. So if I were to say, oh yeah, I engaged T1 first, that means my first shot was fired at T1. But the phrase engage in the rule book context almost always means complete the engagement of a given target with the minimum number of required rounds. So when the course of fire says engage T1, T2, T3, and T4 in tactical priority, that means you must fire three rounds at T1, then, to, then T2, then T3, then T4. So when the shooter fired two rounds at T1 and then fired a single shot at T2, they violated 3.2.3.1 for having not fired three rounds at T1 before they fired a shot at T2. So then the light comes on, uh-oh, I need to come back to T1 and complete the engagement. And by doing that, they made the same mistake again because they've now only fired two shots at T2 and now they've come back to T1, and I don't know that it really matters which target they went to after firing two shots at T2, but essentially they've made the same mistake again, firing two shots at a, at a target and then leaving it for another target before they'd completed the engagement. So the question there is, what is the penalty, how many? So I determine that they get one penalty for violating 3.2.3.1 for going to T2 and firing a shot before completing the engagement on T1. But that coming back to T1, which was essentially making the same mistake again, you don't get another penalty because rule 5.1.2 says you get one penalty for each type of infraction. 
So I considered making the same mistake twice to be the same type of infraction so they don't get a second penalty for coming back to T1. Then after completing the engagement of T1, completing the engagement of T2, they then properly transitioned to T3 and fired three rounds and T4 and fired three rounds. And so I judged that they did not violate tactical priority because they did not fire a round at T3 until they had completed the engagement of T1 and T2. So what's the answer? One penalty, uh, violation of 3.2.3.1 for firing only two rounds at T1 before then firing another round at another target. So that's what it comes down to, one penalty. Um, this actually came to me at 4 o'clock in the morning. I decided they should get two um, initially um, for violating tactical priority. The idea that they'd gone to T2 to fire two shots and then came back to T1 that they were violating tactical priority because they were transitioning from a, a more distant target to a nearer target. But uh, after discussing it with a couple of people and thinking about it, uh, that's when I decided that the, the violation of tactical priority would have only come on this stage um, if, I, if the shooter had essentially drawn to the wrong target um, rather than T1. So I think there's just that one uh, violation, one penalty, and uh, the shooter was given just one penalty in this instance, although I can't remember if at the time everybody was in agreement about which rule had been violated. Uh, ultimately, there, it was the correct penalty, uh, but I, I, you know, two months later, uh, I'm not absolutely certain that the call that was made on the scene was exactly right, but it, it was correct that the shooter did get one three-second penalty.